Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penge and welcome back to City Game Studio where we pick things up again with Penge Cupboard who is currently the sole employee of Geek Cupboard Games but this might all be about to change. So we've published some relatively well received games recently, nothing spectacular but they've been pretty good and also we have made quite a chunk of money from doing lots of contract work so it might be time to hire another member of staff. We might need to get somebody on board to help pour Penge Cupboard out a little bit. The only thing is I'm not entirely sure how we go about doing this kind of thing. I mean do we need a bigger office first or can we cram two people into this tiny little office space here? I do not know so let's take a look at hiring new people and just see if we can muddle through this. So I think this is where we get staff members. So currently we have Penge Cupboard and Penge Cupboard has a tiny salary. They're currently doing nothing at all and they're okay. They're okay. So they've got 54% in design, 52% in development and 52% in polish. So they're okay, they're not spectacular. So I think if we go to here, we can hire a new staff person. So let's have a look. Oh my goodness me. Oh, Penge Cupboard, I take it all back. Saying you're not spectacular was a complete lie. You're brilliant, Penge Cupboard. Um, okay, right, so it looks like people specialize in certain bits. So for example here, so Mail, Marl, possibly Mackenzie is very good at designing, but they're terrible at development. And kind of, you know, on the flip side, Jade and Farrell, really good at development, really quite terrible at design, but also they're very good at polish. Okay, I think, hang on, Tammy Mills, 15% design, which is, you know, okay, 42% development, that's very good, and 53% polish. Okay, you're quite good. You have a tiny salary. That should be okay. I mean, some of our contract work can pay that salary off quite nicely. So how about we hire you, Tammy Mills. I don't think they have any other sort of traits or whatever. I think that's just it. That's their stats. So, okay, let's hire you. Right, okay, so that's good. So we've hired somebody. Um, producers, here. oh, hang on. There's all these other jobs here. Should we have looked at that? I don't know. Do we need a marketing manager? to sort of you know, boost our hype up a little bit. Maybe not right now. The only thing is, where are they? <laughs> where is our new person? What are they doing? So now we can see that we've got Tammy Mills. Ah, they're not assigned to a studio. Okay, how do we go about doing this game? How do we do this? Do we need to put a desk in place? If we click the desk, oh, hang on, that moves the desk around. Okay, so hang on a minute, hang on. We might need to do some furniture moving. We might be able to fit another desk in over there, possibly, if we just move things around a little bit. Right, there we go. So now I think we need to buy ourselves a new desk and a new computer, possibly. I think that might be where we need to go. So buy furniture and stuff for your office. I do like that. Um, replace desks and update computers. Ah, maybe we could do that as well. Um, okay, first things first. So furniture for the office. Um, does that mean... Oh no, hang on. The other thing was desks, wasn't it? This is just like chairs and things. Oh no, there is a desk though. There is a desk. A wooden desk or a metal desk? Or a large wooden desk? Ooh, large wooden desk. How large is the large desk? So it makes them a little bit... What does that do? Happiness bonus minus 0.5%. Why, why are you sad about the large wooden desk? However, it does increase your productivity a little bit because you're sat at a lovely desk. Do you know what? How big? How big is that? It, it, yeah, you're not joking. It is quite large, isn't it? Okay, let's pop that in just there. And then we need to get a computer. Hang on. So is that down here? So upgrade computers. So do we need to buy ourselves a computer? No. Okay. Oh, hang on. A dark metal. Hang on. I didn't see these. Oh, this would have been much better. These would have been much better. Hang on a second. Hang on. Can we get rid of that? Um, how do we how do we sell this? <laughs> I want to make it go away now. Um, uh, press backspace or delete. Okay, right. Sell that. Okay, tiny bit of a waste of money, but never mind. But yeah, if we can have fancy a dark metal desk that increases productivity a great deal, that would be very good, wouldn't it? Um, or a wooden desk. Yeah, that one there. Five percent productivity. Although happiness does go down. But does that mean it decreases slower? Does that mean the happiness goes down 2% slow because they have themselves a lovely desk? I think maybe that wooden desk looks like the best thing. Let's get that instead, shall we? Oh, hang on. Now what have I done? Oh, crikey. Okay, this, I was expecting this to be significantly more straightforward. Oh, hang on. Right. Buy. Let's buy that. And... Oh, okay, right. So that's just upgraded the desk that we've got. Okay, right. Okay, this is fine. This is okay. So now 
What about the computers that are on that desk? Can we upgrade that? Oh, they're auto upgrading the computers. Okay, so now we want another desk. We want another one of those, please. Oh, maybe we're supposed to put the desk in and then upgrade it. Oh my goodness me. Right, okay. <laughs> Hang on a second. This is fine. I'm a professional in charge of running an office. I know exactly what's happening. So if we just buy a wooden desk, if we just go, right, yeah, there's a wooden desk. whoop de doop lovely, lovely. And then we upgrade to proper wooden desk and buy that. Right, okay. Two wooden desks. This is exciting stuff. How do we assign... Ah, Assign an employee. Here we go. Right, Tammy, in you come. Tammy needs a computer. Okay, so auto upgrade computer. So, okay, so there we go. We got there in the end. I mean, I don't think we did that in necessarily the most effective way, but we got there. Okay, this is good. This is good. So Tammy and Penge are now here, ready to do some good, lovely work. Okay, our money is sort of tumbling down a bit, but we still have over half a million dollars. So that's pretty good. So I think what we should do Let's go and do one bit of contract work, just to top up our money a bit more. Now, I didn't notice this before when I uh, sort of edited the last video. There's all these bits down here, so you don't just have to take the top one. You can choose different things. So how about we have a go? I mean, yeah, could we order it by... Oh, you can't order it by the one that pays the most, unfortunately. Um, how about that? That's... Oh, duration of seven. That's not very long, is it? That, hang on. No, but that's okay, actually. Require points 20 on a duration of seven weeks, I assume that is, to uh, start work on developing, uh, developing confusing fantasy. <laughs> okay, that sounds fun. But we get a lot of money for that. We get a lot of money for that. Do you know what? Yeah, let's give that a go, shall we? So now, if we unpause time... Oh, hang on. You are now feeling boxed in your little studio, so get to your next location. Ah, we can rent new buildings. We can work on several projects at the same time. Your studio is growing. It's time to study the market and have a peek at the competition. You could see your competitors on the city map. Now you can watch them. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? Hang on a second. Um, go to the map. So, okay, we can watch them. Right, so if we go down here and go uh, click, click on that. What does that mean? Hang on. So, Snowstorm are in that building there. But I don't know what I'm doing in terms of watching them. Do you know what? It's fun. We'll just get on with our own thing. Right, so here we go. So, time is ticking down. But, you know, we're, we're going to absolutely be fine with this. We're going to get a great big pile of money very quickly for working on confusing fantasy. This is going to be wonderful stuff. Right, so in it pops. We're enjoying working on whatever that thing is. A management game. It's all very easy. Oh, this is... We're going to be done with this in no time at all. And there we go. Well, hang on. This thing's pinging around. Ah, list offices. Okay, right. There we go. So we got that done. We got paid a huge big pile of money. So now we've got 683 grand. That is very good indeed. Right, let's just send you both on holiday just to top your happiness up. I mean, Penge Cupboard's happiness is 81%. That's, that's loads. That's loads. He's really enjoying life at the minute. And yeah, auto upgrade computers, please. Absolutely. Oh, look at that. It's, it's got a disk drive. Uh, exciting times. There we go. So we did that contract. And now we've been able to upgrade our hardware a bit to make things a bit better, which is wonderful. Um, okay. What's that then? So list of video game companies. List the competitors. Okay. So we've got these four here who are all worth quite a lot of money. Okay. <laughs> we've got some way to go to be better than them. Right? You are. Game message understood. Um, and then down here, list the offices available. Okay, so there's a studio. Oh, there's loads. There are loads of studios available. Okay, okay. So to buy... Oh, hang on. The buying price. Yeah, these are all in the millions. These are all in the millions. Hang on, hang on. What's the cheapest office that we could actually buy? It is $17.45 million. We don't have $17.45 million for a teeny tiny office. How about we look at the rental price? Um, okay, this might be a bit more sort of uh, plausible. So that's going to cost us... Okay, these are too big. These are too big. We don't need anything like that right now. I think we should possibly scale it down a little bit. Um, that looks quite nice. Where's that? Oh, that's not even that far away. That's not even that far away. We can just get all our stuff in a wheelbarrow and you know, you know, port it over to the new place. Um, yeah, so 209 square metres. That sounds like quite a lot. I don't know what our current setup is. 
what have we got right now? I don't really know what we've got currently. Um, hang on, can we can we figure out what we've got right now? Hang on, close that. Um, yeah, where are we? We are there. So how big is our one? We've got 419 meters squared. Really? What, in that tiny little room? <laughs> are you sure we've got that? Goodness me. Well, that's what it says. Check your studio's team. It has not produced the same amount of design, development, or polish. It will impact the games you create. Yeah, okay, fine. We're working on it. Um, yeah. 419 meters squared. Okay. So hang on. So if we want to rent something... Uh, hang on a minute. Where was the rent button? List office is available. Rental price? Hang on. I'm really confused because these don't. These seem to be smaller. I'm very. I'm baffled. I'm befuddled by the whole thing. Why would we want to move into a place which is smaller? <laughs> that can't be. I refuse to believe that that's 419 meters squared. That tiny place that we're in. That's not 419. Maybe 4.19 meters squared, possibly. Um. Okay. Okay. Right. Let's go up the list and just look. I mean, look, 92 meters squared. That seems more plausible. That seems way more plausible. Um, okay, hang on then. So what if we pay? Let's scroll up into the middle here. So, I don't know, we've got loads of money from that contract we did. So what if we got... That looks that looks very big. That looks very grand indeed. Where was the one that was near to us? I kind of like the one that was, was relatively close to us. There. That one there. 23.33k a month. So that's not too bad. And it's 209 meters squared, apparently. And it's a nice studio. How about we rent that out and just see how we get on? And if not, we'll just get rid of it and go somewhere else. There we go. Okay, rent this. Yeah, that's significantly bigger than the other place we had. So, game, I don't quite know why you were telling us that our current place was 419 meters squared or whatever. That was a big fib, wasn't it? Um, okay, so what does auto furnish mode do? Does that just put in... That would put in 13 desks. Oh my goodness me. 13 desks at a cost of 325 grand. And we've got 636 grand. So we could do this and then just do another couple of contracts to top the money back up. Or we could just go in and select things and put things down as we want. Um, yeah, I kind of like the idea of just going to auto furnish mode. Oh my goodness me. Right. It hasn't just put desks in. It's put everything in. Oh, okay. I can't just say we'll put desks in and then we could put down all the lovely extra decoratives. But it's... Oh my word, this... That, that's marvellous. Oh my goodness me. Right, okay. So we've got... We've got quite a lot of computers and things that are going to sit mostly unused because we've only got two people working here. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Wow. I mean, that's certainly the upgrade. Um, I, I, oh, I kind of wanted to do some of this myself. That's a bit of a shame. I kind of thought that it would just put desks in. I didn't realise it would put chairs and tables and, and there's a vending machine and all sorts of exciting bits and bobs. I thought we'd have some say in that. But, okay, never mind. This is the way it is now. So I think let's assign us. Okay, so we'll go down here. So Tammy can go there and Penge can go just there. There we go. Right, so we're over there in a brand new, very, very exciting, very wonderful office. Look at this. The only thing is, now we need to start making huge big piles of money. So, contract. Let's go and do a contract. That's 188 grand. So, let's start that, please. Yeah, let's get on with that contract. Uh, dull walls are sapping productivity. Time to redesign it. You can repaint the walls, change the posts, and redo the floors of your studios. What? What do you mean I can change the walls? Can we have everything? Geek cupboard, corporate colours. Um, down there, build mode. <gasps> this is very exciting. Oh, it costs a great big pile of money. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. Oh, and it can't be geek cupboard, corporate colours. Boo. Um, I mean, I don't mind the walls that we've got now. I'm actually okay with those. I like the fact they've got nice windows. The floor... Do we want to change the floor to a more sort of lighter appeal? Do you know what? Yeah, I quite like that. And then the pillars. I mean, well, I can't really see those. So, yeah, we'll just buy the nice, slightly lighter floor. Oh, I quite like that. That makes it look a little bit brighter and sunnier, doesn't it? That's all very nice. Um, 
Okay, right, we've spent massive piles of money. Maybe we should unpause time for a second and just let them get on with working on this contract here, the infernal love, which all sounds very exciting. However, hang on, why are you not, why are you not doing anything? Oh, is it because, is it because you're on holiday? Ah, right, we sent them on holiday <laughs> and then picked up a contract. Yeah, very good, good stuff. Um, and, okay, Tamcom are gonna buy Rustine for $40.76 million. Oh, yeah, we're quite some way off sorting all that stuff out. Yeah, we're not quite at that level, but lots of points popping in. We're gonna get some good money via this contract thing. So it's all gonna go quite nicely. So um, yeah, okay, here we go. So let's see what we can do. So hopefully they can sort this out. Yeah, they're gonna be done in loads of time. Absolutely loads of time. Right, so pop that in. And there we go, it's finished. The contract's finished. We can start working on it now. <laughs> there we go. Right, so um, I don't know what all these bits here are doing. Physics, artificial intelligence. Okay, we've picked up some skills, I think. But more importantly, we've got ourselves a great big pile of money, which is very helpful because obviously we just spent loads of it. So, ah, hang on a second. The police announced Gemcon, uh, what's that, 15. Okay, can we go to that? Um, where was that? Marketing campaigns, participate in a convention. Now we've got a bit of money, we could actually start spending a bit more on getting our sort of our name out there. So there we go. So we can have two games and we will attend Gemcon 15 at the cost of 67 grand, which does seem expensive. But yeah, OK, we will attend, please. September 1982. We shall be there. The only thing is, I kind of feel like we need to start working on a game now. Um, OK, do you know what? Is it worth employing somebody else is it worth having three people in fact well hang on hang on hang on tammy tammy was really good at development and polish but not very good at design so is it worth hiring somebody who is really good at design gavin gavin howell is mr design man look at that he's not very good at anything else is gavin but he's really good at designing things so yeah how about we have you so yeah, we'll hire, we'll hire and assign. Um, oh, he's in a different studio. Oh, hang on. These people are all from different studios. Is that right? I don't know. Hire and assign. Okay, so have you been assigned? I would make Gavin sit over there. Okay. <laughs> you could have put him next. could have put him there so we could at least have a chat. I suppose maybe that's around a corner or something. Okay, so now we've got Gavin on board as well. So we've got three people. So we should be okay at this sort of thing now. However... I notice one human resources to unlock human resources. Okay, I don't really understand that, but um, I mean, yeah, can we employ, um, oh yeah, do we get a marketing person in now? Um, no, oh no, hang on, no, hire staff. Ah, yeah, here we go. Do we want to hire some other people? So a producer, I don't really know what they do. Ah, productivity bonus. Oh, look at this. Hang on, why would we hire, <laughs> why would we hire these people? Why would we hire Evans O'Connor? Here you go, here's a bit of salary to make us significantly worse at working. Uh, uh, that doesn't make any sense. Um, but I mean, down here, look, down here, salary for Kellen Anderson. Uh, we pay you 1.21K per month, I imagine. And you affect our productivity by 18.64%. Do you know what? Yeah, you can come in. Hire and assign, absolutely. Let's get all these people in. Right, a human resources person. This is just terrible. This is terrible stuff. Why Why are you rubbish? Happiness bonus, minus 10%. Good. Okay, an accountant, tax reduction. That could be quite good. I mean, if we're going to do it, let's go all in. Who's got the best tax reduction? Harmony Bosco. However, they can only work on two games at a time. Uh, George or Gorge, Gorge, Jorge Cub here is very expensive, but can work on four games at a time. But are we going to ever work on four games at a time? I think let's take Harmony Bosco. Let's do that. And then marketing manager, hype bonus. Um, yeah, Tanya. Tanja? Tanya. Um, let's get you on board because you seem to be relatively cheap. And you are very, very good at hyping things up. However, you can only work on one game at a time. But at the moment, that's fine. That's all we're going to be working on realistically. So, yeah. Okay, let's get you in. So, the only person we haven't got is a human resources person. So, 
I'm a bit confused by this. I'm a little bit confused. How does... Why Why would it bring the happiness down? I don't get that. That doesn't make any sense in my head. Is Am I missing something glaringly obvious? Does that slow down the loss of happiness or something? I mean, it would imply happiness bonus is that's the best person. Do you know what? We're not going to get that in yet. We're not going to get that in because I don't fully understand. Um, oh, and we've just... Really? We've put everybody around in really weird places. Can we... Hang on, hang on. This corner over here, can we have this as all the other people? So, hang on a second. So the programmers can all go in one bit. So how about we have programming corner here. So let's have Gavin. Uh, we'll put we'll put Penge there. And we'll put Tammy just there. Okay, so that's good. And then all you lot can go over here. So Harmony can go over there. And then we want Kellan to go just there. And then we want, we haven't got one of those. Harmony can, oh, we've just moved her chair, but that's fine. It's lovely. And then Tanya can go just there. There we go. That's much better. So programming team, kind of admin team. Okay, right. Now let's let's make a game, shall we, everybody? Because that's kind of what we're here to do. Um, how are we looking in terms of the game engines? Um, also, hang on, number of employees, studio list, Chagnot. What's Chagnot? Hang on, what's that mean? What is what is this? Is that our studio? Is that where we are? We're not the Chagnot studio, are we? This is very confusing. Hang on, what's happened to our other place? TGC uh, Home. Oh, and TGC, that's another place. Oh, okay, right, okay. I mean, can we get rid of this? We don't need this place. It definitely is not a 490 meter squared game, you big fibber. I mean, we could just sell that. We don't need that. So get rid of that. Hang on. Hold that down. We don't need that. Okay, right. I see. So this is our Chagno base. I don't like that. I don't know what that means. Can we just call it TGC? No, let's call it, Joe. You know what? Let's call it The Cupboard. There you go. You can go and work in The Cupboard. That seems to be much better. So then if we go and work on something, if we're working on a game engine, there you go. We're working in The Cupboard. Okay, that's much better. Um, Yeah, features list. If we select everything, how is that looking? Now, I think I think our current game engine is okay with that sort of thing. So, okay, let's not do that. Let us self-publish a new game. Let's have a look. What is hot right now? Archaeology, but it's coming down. Military. Okay, or oh, post-apocalyptic. That is going up in popularity. Let's do that. Um, and let's put it on... Oh, now, here we go. This is interesting. At the moment, the Watagi 2600 is still, you know, it's still got more market. So let's go for that. And we've already got the license for it, I believe. Um, and we shall have ourselves a simulation game. Um, however, what should we call our post-apocalyptic simulation game? And it's a good genre platform match, which is good. Um, let's call it um, Fell Out. <laughs> fell Out, because we fell out of a nuclear bunker or something. That'll do the job. Um, okay, so here we go. Now we can assign people. So you can work on that. The accountant can work on that. And the marketing manager can work on that. So there we go. So tax is going to come down. Productivity is going to go up. And our hype is going to go through the roof with this one. Okay, so use the, use the teapot engine because that's what we've got. So we'll use that. Um, yeah, when we redesign this, we're going to put our royalties up because... These people here have, like that there, the Tamcom engine is rubbish. And they're charging 38% royalties on it. I think we could up our royalties to 10 with this wonderful thing. So, yeah, we'll go with that, please. Um, okay, I think we're ready. Let's make fell out. There we go. So, let's work on this. It's going to be very exciting. And we want to, do you know what? We could publish a demo. I mean, we need to, I imagine, program some of the game first. But we could start getting a demo sort of, oh, look at the speed that they're working. Oh my goodness me, they're flying through things. Okay, let's publish a demo. So let's get that done. I don't quite know how they're going to do that when we haven't actually <laughs> got any game yet. Um, right, story, very important indeed. Characters, really important as well. Crank that up to the top. Uh, gameplay and graphics, yeah, absolutely. Up all that. The only thing is, what do we want to do with this? I don't think you need joystick support. Don't think we need that in. So, okay, but no graphics capabilities yet. Yep, yeah, okay, right, work on that, please. 
Let's get this all sorted. Let's put it on to nice fast speed. Right, now they're getting on with the actual chunk of the design stuff. It's taking a little bit longer, but that's absolutely fine. Right, so you can all work on this. And they're happy, look. Some of them are happy working on this type of game. They're having a lot of fun. Hype is going very well indeed. Um, a competitor's using a game engine, East Forest, has uh, used the teapot engine to program Scottish Animal. Okay, <laughs> go about Loch Ness or something. Um, right, physics, uh, artificial intelligence and sound. Okay, they're all good. And yeah, we'll have mono sound and password based saves. Yeah, okay, that seems good. That does not use any of the graphics capabilities. So we might get sort of a little bit downgraded because we're not making the most of the console. Do you know what? That's fine. Let's just get on with it, shall we? I'm sure it'll all be fine. How's the hype looking? 43, 47. Um, the market is stabilizing. In the middle of the summer, Watagi, who's definitely not Atari, the leader in the video game market, announced losses of 356 million. Oh my goodness me. Plastics was experiencing very serious difficulties and was withdrawing from the market. Okay, the rumor was the video game market was collapsing to make way for microcomputers. Oh, Plastics is another company, is it? Um, okay, $2 billion in annual sales in the US, video games remain a solid industry. Okay, right, so the market is actually sort of stabilizing again. Okay, that's fine, that's good to know. It's good to know, given that, you know, we've just bought a massive game studio and such. So let's see, okay, new platform, VX Spectrum's coming out, somebody else is using our game engine, we're not profitable, we're completely aware of this, we know game, we know. This game here is gonna be amazing. Everyone's going to love Fallout. It's going to be astonishingly successful. Um, okay, right. So we're nearly done our development bit. How are we doing in terms of points? Are we are we done? Hello? Final points? Can we get... Come on. Let's get more, more development points and design points. No, nope, nobody was bothered at the end there. Okay. And then we could have simple animation because that uses the computing capabilities, and one of the graphics capabilities. And everything else, I think, is at maximum, isn't it, I think? Oh, no, it wasn't quite at maximum. Um, yeah, okay, right. So let's do this bit. Let's put time on very quickly. Here we go. So just do the final bits and bobs, sort the polish out, um, new tech available. Um, the PC8002 is coming to the end of its life. Okie doke. Right. Here we go. Let's just finish this. Right, okay. Now see, this is the thing. Hype goes up, and then as obviously things take longer, hype comes down. So loads of people in the comments on the previous video, I say loads, maybe two, um, said something like, why don't you start doing hype immediately? As soon as you're developing the game, start doing the hype thing. And that does work, but then hype gets to a point, and obviously if the game isn't out, everyone just forgets about it and goes, actually no, that's taking too long to come out. I don't care anymore. And the hype goes back down, as we've seen just here. So it is a bit of a bit of a balance there to try and work out what you need to do with hype. So I think we might have done it a bit too early, but okay, let's release Fallout. There we go. Let's see how we get on. We'll make it nine. We'll make it nine money. Oh, look at this. It's a, it's a super game in terms of points. Um, Yeah, okay, do the game report as well. So let's just unpause time. We can all work on that. Boop, lots of things going in. Let's hope this actually was pretty successful. That would be lovely if this was good. And, hmm, it's average. Superb aesthetics, flawed mechanisms. Okay, right, go to next. So, um, sobriety and efficiency. Um, they've got a great team. They try new combos. It works for them. It's an excellent post-apocalyptic simulation game. Okay, so story was a bit weak. AI was a bit rubbish. But apart from that, Everything went okay. So let's just see. Let's get to the, hang on. Do you know what? While we're not doing anything, let's do a contract just to get some money in, just to pay pay the bills. There we go. World of Railroad. That sounds fun. Let's have a go at that, shall we? Let's accept that contract so everyone can keep busy doing that whilst we wait for the results of Fallout to come in. And this will give us a big pile of money, which is always very handy because that money has come down <laughs> quite considerably on, you know, hiring loads of staff and buying a massive office and filling it with stuff. So here we go. Ooh, top selling games. Perfect yoga, gothic prison. I'd play gothic prison. Absolutely, I'd play that. It's got the teapot engine. Um, remote big game, darkest carnival. Crikey. Uh, Indian plunger, mythical Bible, Scottish animal. Whereas, oh there, there's our ones. 
Okay, so we're not doing great in terms of the uh, in terms of that, but okay, it's fine. We will see. Here we go. Contract complete already. We'll get paid a great big pile of money for it. We're just adding to it now. We're just showing off. It's like, yeah, do you know what? We're doing even more work on this for you. Don't you worry, guys. Okay, yeah, that's lovely. And yes, wonderful. So have we been given a great big pile of money? Yes, we have. Hooray, there we go. The money's going up again, which is always very welcome to see. Right, okay. Everyone, go on holiday. Everyone have a lovely break. We shall have a nice break to send people away for a bit just to go and enjoy a city break or whatever it is, the summer sunshine or whatever it is you want to do. And here we go. So Kiki Ball goal score strikers um, actually lost significantly less money than most of our other games. So it's probably our most successful game so far. <laughs> Hooray. Okay, that's pretty good. And what's this? Oh, we need to figure out what we're doing with the... Um, with the thing, with the setup at the uh, sort of uh, convention thing. Um, yeah, okay, that seems sensible. Fell out on one side, kicky ball goal score, strikers on the other one. Yes, please. Okay, so we had 50 visitors on that one and 50 visitors on that one. Okay, that was pretty good, was it? I don't know. I mean, let's wait for everyone to come back. I don't know who actually attended the conference from our team. <laughs> I don't know who that was. Oh, all of 52 income. Really? Oh dear. Right, that's that's not grand, is it? That's not very good at all. Um, okay, okay. We need to make something amazing. We need to make something really, really important and amazing and tremendous. Um, oh, hang on a minute. New platform's been released. New tech is available. We've bought the VX Spectrum platform, have we? Um... Oh, okay. Apparently we have. That's all very exciting. That's good. Um, what's this doing again? Um, that is... Oh, yeah. Send the studio on holiday. Oh, we could have done that. We could have done that rather than just clicking on everybody individually. But okay, that's fine. Now we know that's there. Uh, right, let's... Do we want to update the teapot engine? Do we want to update this with extra new things and then add this on? So have ourselves a 10% royalties thing because I think there might be some new tech. So... Features list, there's 32, uh, yeah, 304 points. So, yeah, there's a few more new things. There's mouse support. Ooh, exciting mouse support. Um, yeah, let's update this, and that'll be good. And then, yeah, we get 10% royalties from that, and that'll give everybody something to do. So there we go. You lot, get working on this. With, I'll just pause time. That won't help at all. Uh, right, here we go. This will be done in no time. This is absolutely fine. They'll get all this done. Lots of lovely things pouring in. And there we go. Somebody's using the game engine. Um, oh, and it's not even finished. But we're getting 10% royalties for Spectacular Forklift. <laughs> of course we are. Brilliant. Okay, so 10% royalties. So already we're getting a bit more money, which is wonderful. And the Watagi 5200 has been released. And there we go. The teapot engine has been fully upgraded excellent stuff okay right so now i think what we'll do is let's go to here let's make another thing how about we make ourselves hang on what what um where are we december 82 is it worth making a sequel to kicky ball goal score strikers because now we've got better better tech in the teapot engine i think we should do that um the only thing is what do we make it on um, hang on. The Watagi 2600 is certainly coming down in popularity. The market is collapsing for that. So where do we go? Where do we go with this? How about the Commodore 64? Although the VX Spectrum, 14 computing capabilities, but only one graphics capability. And it has significantly less market share. Oh no, what do we do? Or do we port a game? Do we port Fallout to the, hang on, to the Spectrum? Do we do, oh, hang on, what's, what's that doing? Can we port it to many things? Is this telling us how we're porting it over? Yeah, so they're, they're the two popular ones at the minute. We can't get that one for some reason. Okay, so if we do that, no platform available. Oh, hang on, did I just turn them off? Hang on, so both of those, please. Um... Yeah, VX Spectrum and the RIC-20. Yeah, okay. So if we port that over, how's this going to work? Just, let's just press yes. Okay. Um, right, so now we're... Okay, so we work on them both at the same time. Okay, that's fine. 
so costs will mount as we work on this, but we're just porting it over to a new thing. What's the purpose of that button? You need to manage the user interface of your game. So you have a new design gauge when creating a game. Ah, we've got a, a UI button thingamajig. Okay, so release fell out. So fell out. Okay, not great. Not great on the uh, whatever console that was. And then fell out on this one, the RIC20. Release that. How is it? Again, a little bit kind of rubbish, but never mind, never mind. They were able to get the most out of the console. That's all they had to say about it. <laughs> oh, dear me, that's not very good, is it? Um, okay, right, that's all fine, that's all fine. How about then we make ourselves another new IP? What's popular right now? Sort by trending cooking. A cooking simulation. Oh, this is perfect. The only thing is, what do we put it on? If we put it on the Watagi 2600, the market share is coming down all the time. Um, I mean, the Commodore 64 is looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Market share has gone up quite a bit. Let's make it for that. 25k for a license. That's fine. Right. Um, yep, yeah, you. Um, yep. Yeah, hang on. You're busy. Really? Are you? Are you busy? With what exactly? What are you busy doing? Um, oh, okay. I didn't think they were all busy, but okay, let's let a month run by. They're working on marketing all this other stuff. Um, okay, there we go. A month has gone by and a mortgages button has appeared. Is that because we're bankrupt? Have we just gone bankrupt or something? Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on, can we come out of that? Can we, oh no. I suspect we might've just ran out of money, but I didn't notice. <laughs> um, okay, so we can get ourselves a huge mortgage for 13 years. Um, or down a bit. It's so a monthly payment, 31... A one-year mortgage, but we have to pay 31k a month. We could do that, couldn't we? We can... Hang on. Let's drag that out a bit. Let's put it up to five years, maybe. Five years, 6k a month. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's apply for that, because I assume we just ran out of money. Yes, I rather suspect we did. Okay, <laughs> let's do some contract work, everybody. <laughs> let's do this, shall we? Um, let's go on, uh, that's, that's quite a lot of money, 211k, yeah, we'll get, what was that game called? Kinky Golf, <laughs> okay, whatever floats people's boats, right, you are, right, that's complete, already, nice and simple, right, big pile of money, let's do another contract, um, how about that one there, what's that called? Generic Fantasy, that sounds completely bland, let's go and work on that, so how long is this taking? Okay, the market is collapsing. Watagi are struggling and we are also going to struggle. But okay, so that's another 200 grand coming our way. Okay, that's a welcome thing. Right now we've got 600 grand. Okay, so the mortgage and our contracts are paying out very nicely indeed. So now, can we make our new game? Can we make the new cooking game? Oh, now steampunk's really popular and cooks are coming down. Um... Okay, we'll make a steampunk... Oh, it doesn't really go with simulation, though, does it? Steampunk. Um, Atlantis cartoon comedy. Oh, hang on, hang on. Sort by trending. There we go. Park. Theme park. Simulate or a management. Oh, simulation or a management for a park game. Um, I think... I think simulation goes well. Simulation would go well. On the Commodore 64... Not a good combo of things, apparently, but we'll make it work. Um, you're still busy, apparently. No, don't work on Fell Out the game. Come and work on this, please. Accountant, no, don't work on Fell Out. Work on this. And you can work on this as well. I'd rather you worked on this. There we go. Right, everyone move over. Um, let's not call it Stoic Chase, though, because that doesn't make sense. Let's call it Coaster Chaos. I like that. And we've got an exclamation mark at the end to make it sound even more chaotic and such like. Yep. Yeah, okay, let's go for that. So make that, please. Nice and fast. Right, okay. So now we have extra bits and bobs. Oh my goodness me. Right. Um, okay, let's have mouse support. The only thing is, we only have four of these, four of the computing points available. Yeah, that's not very good, is it, really? Right, bring that down. Bring that down. User interface has to be very good for a simulation game. Story, I imagine, can come down a bit for a roller sort of coaster type game, because there's not much of a story. And characters can also come down. So let's just drop those down to there, say. 
gameplay, yes, graphics, yes, user interface, yes. And yeah, we've only got one more computing point available. But I think maybe basic dialogue is going to come in handy. We want it to have 3D graphics and mouse support is going to be very handy indeed. So, um, oh no, do you want gamepad support more than mouse support if we're playing on that console? Yeah, let's go for that, shall we? There we go. Right, so let's see how we get on with this. Maybe a mouse would have been better. Um, okay, our mortgages are expensive. Rental costs are a significant expense. Yeah, I'm aware of this. I know how this works, Gabe. I know how this works. I, I'm a grown-up. I can sort money out. I'm absolutely fine. <laughs> I'm good with numbers, me. Okay, right, hang on. Back onto there. Fell out. Uh, didn't make a great deal of money there. Never mind, never mind. Right, now I think, hang on. Let's hype it in the middle. Let's hype it in the middle of the sort of development phase. That's what we'll do with the hype. So right now, hype doing nothing. So let's run time on. There's loads of notifications up there. Right, bring that down. AI has to be, I imagine, quite good. Physics has got to be pretty much up there for roller coasters. Sound, maybe not quite so much, just a tad less. And mono sound. It's gonna to have to be mono sound and we can't have anything else from the last bit from the polish section, unless it's just graphic stuff. Yeah, that'll do just fine. Right, and now let's publish a demo. Let's get the hype train underway. Somebody's using the game engine. Two people are using the game engine. Um, new tech is available. We've bought a new platform. Think somebody else is using the game engine. New platform, upcoming platform CPC. And Coaster Chaos has been announced. Let's hope that Coaster Chaos does very well for the studio because we're not really making that much money in terms of the games. We're good at contracts um, and list of video games. Oh, okay, didn't get to see much of that. Um, yeah, this is, we're not going to have, to have any polished things at the end, but that all looks fine. So yeah, we'll go for that, please. Coaster Chaos has proven to be very expensive to develop. <laughs> very costly. Right, Fallout. Oh, oh dear. Fallout made a massive loss. Crikey's. Okay, right, so Fallout was not a commercial success. We sold 54 units of it. Really? Is that all? That's shocking. That is rubbish. We made 400 money from Fallout and it cost us 117,000 money to make. <laughs> that was not a good financial investment. That was terrible. Right, hype is on 43. Let's release Coast to Chaos. Let's hope that this is slightly better received right okay so do all that stuff make the game report at the end please be good please be good <gasps> 94 one of the best games of the year it is huge the ultimate game a perfectly oiled machine <gasps> yes okay user interface is a little bit lacking but everything else is pretty much spot on okay so i am expecting great things um okay um pench cupboard once oh hang on no because they've gone up or something because they've increased at least one level in one or more areas of competence they've received a salary increase okay so you've gone from 500 to 550 yeah that, that's fine we can cope with that that's acceptable right hang on so the ulysses 2 is coming to the end of its life somebody else is using using our engine jack thompson's hitman who <laughs> did um and um how was this yeah that was really good. Parking simulation is excellent. Gameplay is very important for simulation. Simulation and Commodore 64, excellent match. Okay, let's do a contract just to get some money in. Um, what's looking like it's gonna earn the most? Uh, possibly that very first one by the look of it. That one there, Wrath of the Katana. Okay, let's do that then. And then we might let everyone go on holiday for a bit. But just get this done first, just to bring in a huge pile of money. That's going to be nice. Uh, yep, okay, good. Right, 615 grand we've got. That's better. So hang on a second, where was the button? Send the studio on holiday. Everyone, clear off on holiday. Have some lovely fun. Although they haven't gone on holiday. <laughs> Why haven't they gone on holiday? Go on holiday, everybody, clear off. Right, Coast of Chaos. Oh my goodness me. Is Coaster Chaos going to be the first game that we ever have to actually turn a profit? We've got a massive fan base from it. I say massive. There's like 59 people that like it. Out of, you know, a global population of whatever it was in 1983, 7 billion or something. But, you know, it's fine. It's better than nothing. But look at that. 
160,000 money from Coast to Chaos. Okay, that went very well. That went splendidly well indeed. Coast to Chaos has done very nicely. We've actually made a decent game. Hooray! Um, okay, the Watagi 5200 is coming to the end of its live. That's also coming to the end of its live. Sales report. Coast to Chaos is excellent. This is wonderful news. Okay, that's going to help us a great deal. Somebody else is using the game engine. The CPC has been released, which is very exciting because I used to have an Amstrad CPC 464 when I was growing up. It's all very exciting. Um, and somebody's being bought out for some reason. Okay, right. This is all very good. This is all very good. Um, have we got the latest computers? Have we got the latest things? Like, Do we need to go and upgrade computers and such like? Auto upgrade computers is on for that studio. So we should be auto upgrading machines and that kind of stuff. Um, okay, how about then we make ourselves another game? Let's get another game done. I don't think we need to do anything with the game engine yet because there's not enough new stuff. So how about we've got an okay amount of money. Let's have a look. Hang on, how are we doing with the... What's going on here? Oh. Oh, Grantendo have appeared on the market. Okay, with the with the GES. Oh, oh, this is very exciting. Hang on, what's that little thing? To call Grantendo to negotiate. Oh, we have to give them a call to negotiate access to a license for their console. Do you know what? Yeah. Oh, hello there. Hello, Hiroshi Kyoto. Well, for Grantendo, what can I do for you? I want to publish games on the GS. We've spent many years developing the GS. I'd be delighted to work with you. However, I wonder what your company can bring to the wonderful GES. Okay. So, projected number of units sold, 47.56 million. Customized offer, money offer, 60 grand. Exclusivity, zero months. So, if we just give them 60 grand, we get the license. I think we can afford that. We could do another contract if we needed to, to, you know, sort of finish that off. So, um... Yeah, okay. We cannot accept this proposal. Oh. Oh, okay. What can I do for you? Um, I want to publish games. Yeah, okay. Hang on a minute. Hang on. How do we do this? What if we give them 120 grand? And then just sort of, you know, do do, do a contract to pay for that. We cannot accept this proposal. Oh, boo! Oh, thank you for your time, but I feel incredibly disappointed. Okay. Never mind. So we're going to have to make things for the Commodore 64, by the look of it now. That's the biggest thing if we can't get Grantendo <laughs> to uh, to sort of play ball. Oh, botherations. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Um, okay. So, um, uh, yeah, where were we? What were we making it on? Um, oh, yeah, over here. So, yeah, the Commodore 64 it is. Um, what theme do we want to go for? Let's go for... Uh, what's crossover? Don't know what that is. Archaeology is being quite popular. How about we go for that? So that is a good genre and platform match. Okay, so yeah, that's quite encouraging. Um, so the Commodore 64, people like archaeology games on it. Let's not call it Allied Chipmunk, because that's a little bit strange. Uh, let's call that, uh, let's call it uh, Diggy, uh, Diggy Up Old Stuff. There we go, archaeology, Diggy Up Old Stuff, that'll do. And they're working on Coast to Chaos. Let's take you off Coast to Chaos because that's finished. The accountant can come off that as well. Although, hang on. They are... Hang on. They should be able to work on two things, apparently. It said there. Right, take that off. You can work on that. Okay, right. This is all fine. Diggy up old stuff. The archaeological thriller available on the Commodore 64. Let's make this. Let's make us a wonderful game. We've got 600 grand, so we should be okay. Right, they finished doing the initial bits and bobs. Right, archaeology simulation game. I don't imagine needs characters. It does not need characters. Gameplay, yes. Graphics, yes. User interface, as much as we can. Story, put it up to 40% possibly. And that will do. And this worked nicely last time. So let's go for that again. Or do we want to put mouse support rather than gamepad support? Let's put mouse support. Let's get people using mice now on the common door or whatever it's called. Yep, yeah, okay, that'll do. So now we should have six weeks trundling by whilst we work on this. Oh, can we attend a thing? Can we go to a can we go to a convention? Um when is that? September 1984. Let's get ourselves a similar thing like that again and attend. 
There we go. So a bit of money is going to go out, but we should still be making a bit of money off of Coast of Chaos. So that's pretty good. And fell out. Somebody, somebody somewhere's bought a fell out. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. So mono sound. That will do the job. Uh, physics, AI, sound. Sound in an archaeology game? Probably not that important. Let's just do that again. There we go. Right. So you lot keep working on all the stuff. Right. And now 50k for a demo right in the middle of the development phase. Let's market this bad boy. Let's get this all sorted. Right, platform's been discontinued, new tech is available, and yeah, we can't unfortunately have simple animation on leaderboards because the platform we're working on just is not good enough. So that will do the job. So another four weeks time, development costs have spiraled dramatically. Hype, however, is 31, 35. Okay, can we get up to any more? 39. Uh, people are getting pay rises. Yeah, okay, good stuff. Well done, everybody. 43, release it. Absolutely. Release the game, please. And how's it looking? That's very good. Uh, let's charge 10 for that one. It can be a very expensive archaeological game. We'll do the game report. Let's see how we get on. So that should just be finished pretty much instantly. Okay, a veiled beauty. A must-have for parties with friends. It's a game about archaeology, okay. Um, diggy up old stuff, ironically a fresh breeze, and an opus truly apart, how wonderful. Okay, so the UI, bit rubbish. Everything else, really very good indeed. How is it looking? Only 28k, so nowhere near the popularity of Coast of Chaos. Absolutely nowhere near, which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. Right, these people are happy because they've been given a pay rise, which is all very good. Um, how are you doing? 91, 91, 91. Right, all those people are happy as well. Um, ooh, a swirly thing. Um, okay, right, hang on. There's so much stuff going on. Right, post-mortem of that. User interface is marginal for simulation games. Oh, really? Really, really? Oh, okay. I thought maybe it might have been slightly important, but right you are. Um, right, get rid of all those things. Dig up old stuff was announced. We gave a demo out. Um... Yeah, we need, what's that one more publishing offer? What does that mean? What does that do? Oh no, we need to make another game. We need to make another game and then we can receive publishing offers. Um, how about we try and get a human resources person in? Can we hire a human resources person just to complete that goal? <gasps> Hang on. There's a, there's a decent human resources person. There's somebody who isn't rubbish. Orvel Thiel. Yes, absolutely. In you come. And then if we put you... Uh, hang on a minute. Just there. There we go. We have ourselves a HR person. Now, does that mean that we've completed that goal there? One human resources to unlock human resources, which doesn't make any sense. Right. Okay. Quick thing. Contract. Let's get a contract done. Just get some nice, easy money coming in. That one's 196. Um, yeah, that looks like the best option, doesn't it? That one there. So development, crook-like game, telekinetic mutant. Sounds amazing. Yeah, let's go and work on this, please. And here we go. Assign a human resources manager to manage your employee schedules and pay raises. Okay, so now we have a HR person. That's all very exciting. Everyone's working on this thing, but hang on a minute. Just move time on very quick indeed. Let's get that contract done. That gives us a huge, great big pile of money, which is all very welcome. Okay, right, so... We've got a lot of money now, which is very good indeed. So I think, what do we do? Do we work on one final game? Diggy up old stuff. Yeah, I mean, that would then allow us to receive publishing offers. So if we just work on one more thing, everyone's happiness is really good because people are getting pay rises and things. We're all delighted with life. Um, okay, so let's go to here. Do we want to make... Oh, <laughs> the, the name of the game is Jamaican Lawnmower. I mean, can we have a lawn mowing game? Now there's archaeology. Ah, botherations. Okay, simulation and archaeology is not a great match. Ah, religious, however, is going well. Religious, so genre and platform goes well. So religious goes well on the common door. What about that one? No, and crook-like with religious, no. Um, okay, right, hang on a minute. So producer... I'm a bit confused as to why they're still working on that, because that's finished now. That game is finished. Um, you should be able to work on that, because you can work on two things at once, and you can't work on that, but let's just take you off the other one and put you onto that one. Um, however, our religious 
game, whatever that is, um, can't be called Jamaican Lawnmower. As good as that game is, Extreme Pinball, John Romero's Eyes, Pixelated Fun. Um, Okay, what do we call this then? Let's call it Believe in Me. Now, normally we go for quite silly names for our games, but Believe in Me would sort of work for a religious kind of simulation game. If you're playing as some sort of god or deity or whatever, you want people to believe in you. And if not enough people believe in you, then you just kind of, you know, you fade away into non-existence or whatever. I quite like the idea of that. So, okay, let's give this a go, shall we? And that means we can then get publishing offers. So, right, let's just get this done nice and quick. So there's the initial bump fall done. Um story in a religious game i mean let's put that up the tiniest bit characters i imagine we might need a bit in there um user interface can go sort of slap bang into the middle there graphics yep okay so we'll have mouse support basic dialogue 3d graphics again we need better graphics really we need the world to develop better graphics come on graphics peoples um do you know what let's put the story up the tiniest bit up to 60 percent maybe yeah, okay, that's still good. And we've still got a good sort of uh, good platform and genre match there. So this could be quite successful. But okay, right, work on that, folks. And then whilst we're in the middle of there, oh, somebody else has leveled up. Good job, Gavin. This is all very good indeed. Right, so everyone's getting better. People are getting better at their jobs. It means we're able to do loads more stuff. Right, so let's have diggy up old stuff over there. And then believe in me, we can put over there as a sort of a working demo. Do you know what? That might help. Yeah, do you know what? Let's go for it. 50 visitors. Is that the maximum we can have? Slightly lower attendance, but okay, fine. So hopefully that should help a little bit with the hype side of things. Right, so that's done that. And then we'll have mono sound. And yep, yeah, all that looks good. We'll up the sound a tiny bit. Why not? Um, yeah, okay. So work on that. And then about halfway through, we shall release a demo, I think. That's going to be pretty helpful. So... There we go, demo coming out. So we've announced the game, somebody else is using the game engine. That's all very good indeed. Right, this is looking great. Lots of development points coming in. Right, animation can come down. Optimization, uh, optimization sorry, can go up to the maximum. So all of 6% and artwork can go up to six as well. We can't have any of those because the console just can't hold, sort of handle it. Yeah, okay, the final drive to the end. So Hype 20, Hype 24. Right, Coaster Chaos has finished its run. It's now no longer on sale. It made us a profit. We actually made money off of this. We sold 42,000 units of it. That's wonderful. We paid 82 grand in taxes. Goodness me. But yeah, it got us some fans. Okay, at some point we're going to have to do a sequel of that. When we've got slightly better sort of hardware and such. Right, Hype 27, Hype 31, come on, come on, Hype 35, Hype 39. Um, okay, a tutorial has kind of appeared. So in the polishing gauge, there's now a tutorial kind of thing. And there are new computers available. Okay, right, that's interesting. So let's release, oh, how expensive is it going to be? Let's release our game. So there we go, $10 for the game. How are we looking in terms of fancy star point thingamajigs? Yep, good. We've gone over and you know, above and beyond what we're supposed to do. So let's release the game. Let's see what we do in terms of this. So, boom, is it good? One of the best games of the year, an awesome experience. Perfectly odd. It is huge. I like that. It's like, that's proper journalism. Um, okay, all brilliant. So that should do very well. Now publishers will contact us in no time to make you offers. Okay, so publishing a game is an easy way to become popular and to publish bigger games. Okay, so things are going very nicely indeed. Right, pause time for a second. Hang on, what are they all working on? What are you all working on? Oh, is it the post-mortem report thing in the jig maybe? Okay, so now we want to get 15 games ready so we can target them at a certain audience. Um, then we need quite a lot of fan base to get publishing offer sorted out uh, to organize our own convention we need loads more fans and console development yeah we're nowhere near that kind of thing however yeah there's auto upgrade computers 15 grand to upgrade what have we got oh, there's a lot of computers here isn't there there's a lot of computers hang on let's just auto let's all upgrade the ones that are kind of being used so there we go so we're getting slightly better machines and like that, 
like that and like that and like that. There's no point upgrading all the other ones because that's just a huge expense. And then just to keep us afloat financially, it's time for another contract. Of course it is. Um, okay, 203 grand, 20 polish points. We should be okay with that. Let's get on with it. That'll give us a huge pile of money. We do need it quite soon. There we go. Right, that'll keep us afloat. Do you know what? We might need to do another contract, possibly. <laughs> Just to make sure that we have enough money. 172 grand. Yep, that'll do. Can we finish that as well, please, folks? We did that all in February. Well done. That was amazing. Right, okay. That's balanced the books a little bit. And believe in me, sold 74.51k. Okay, pretty good going. Pretty good going. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll finish up for now and we'll come back next time and just carry on and see what we can do but I mean time is certainly flying by it's 1985 so we've done four years in this run there was a little bit of sort of faffing about with getting the office sorted and hiring staff and all that kind of stuff but I think now we know what we're doing with that I think now we can just sort of plow on and get stuff sorted I think now we can really start getting into making slightly different types of games we we're able to sort of target the audience soon of our games and all that kind of stuff oh yeah I realized we didn't spend any of these we've got 75 genre points we could go and expand a little bit we could start I know we want to save up for like farming games and stuff that would be amazing but I mean sport games we could get some sport simulation games. That would be good. We'd get puzzle games, strategies, adventures, casual. We could start making role-playing games. Oh, this could be very exciting. Okay, so we do have some genre points to spend. Do you want to save them? Do you want to spend them? I do not know, but you know what? We shall consider that sort of stuff next time out because, yeah, we'll finish up for now, come back again, and just see what happens here in the life and times of whatever our studio is called. What are we called? Geek Cupboard Games or something like that. Geek Cupboard Gaming. I don't remember now, but whatever the case, I think we, yeah, we're Geek Cupboard Games. That's what we are. So yeah, we'll come back and just see what happens here in the life and times of Geek Cupboard Games. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in City Game Studio. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. This room was fire free until it wasn't. Okay, yeah, come with me if you want to live, Paul. Hop on. Wee. <laughs> this is brilliant. That looks fun. Do some watery stuff. Yes, make the propane caster not explode. Uh, yeah, the toilet's on fire. Never mind. Oh dear, that didn't go according to plan. Never mind, it's fine. <laughs>